put to work to go and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, Twende Kazi! Everybody, let me see you move!
a 100% track record of doing things, the impossible things. Who are you going to put your faith and your trust in? The person who doesn't give you 100% or the person who gives you 100%? 100%. And who's that person who gives us 100%? Jehovah. Amen. And so we're going to pray to the Lord Most High. Give him all of us, who we are as people, and we're going to be forever surrendered to the King.
Greetings, God's people. I trust that you are well wherever you are watching from, whether you're watching in a watch party with others or you're watching this alone, whether you're settled somewhere sitting down in your home uh, or whether you are traveling as you listen to this. Uh, we are so grateful that you can worship with us today. My name is Pastor M. Moravi um, Wanjao, Senior Pastor of the Mavuno Movement of Churches. And wherever in the world you're watching from, we are so grateful that you're watching with us. Hey, if you are uh, new to Mavuno, if you've never been to an online service, welcome. We're so grateful you're here. Listen, fill out the form. Uh, just use the link that you find on the screen right now. Fill that out. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, tell us who you are. We would love to pray for you this week. And if you would like to be one of, uh, in one of our virtual groups, you'd like to be one of our online groups, uh, discipleship groups where you can fellowship with other like-minded people uh, and just grow together uh, in God's Word. Uh, indicate that as well. We would love to connect you with one of our groups. Hey, as we worship God, uh, one of the ways we worship Him is through music and song as we've been learning this last, uh, in the last month. But also, uh, we worship Him with our, uh, with our giving, with our tithes and our offerings. And as we give, uh, there's a scripture that really encouraged me as I read it. It's in Genesis uh, chapter 12. And this is when God met Abraham. And he was telling him about the things he was going to do for him. And remember, every promise in Scripture that is given to Abraham is true for us as well. Because really, as Christians, we are children of Abraham. That's what the Bible calls us. And uh, God says in Genesis chapter 12, uh, verse 2, he says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And one of the things that that passage encourages me is just the knowledge that, you know what? God did not bless Abraham because you were so smart. Didn't bless him because you were so entrepreneurial. Didn't bless him because you're such a good guy. God blessed him just because. Like God just found this random guy. He could have found somebody in China. He could have found somebody in Africa. But he found this man, this rancher in Mesopotamia and decided to hear and spoke with him and said, I'm going to bless you so the world will be blessed because of you. And you know what? In the same way that Abraham was blessed, we are blessed as well. We don't work for our blessings. Our blessings didn't come because you're such a hustler. Your blessings didn't come because you're so smart. Even the smartness that you have came from God himself. And one of the reasons that God blessed you is so that you can be a blessing. Like Abraham was blessed to be a blessing, we are blessed to be a blessing. And so as you give your tithes and your offerings today, I pray that the Lord will just continue to encourage you to have such a sense of gratitude and awe, of understanding that everything I have is actually a resource given by the one who chose to bless me, not because I deserved it, but because of his goodness and his mercy. And he's blessed me so I can be a blessing. And we thank God that you can be a blessing in giving towards his work today. And so let me pray for us as we give. Father, thank you for your sons and daughters. Thank you for everyone who's here today to receive your word, to worship together. Everyone who's part of this family that is scattered across the world, but we are one family. Thank you that, Lord, we come every week and we grow together. We don't abandon meeting together. And thank you that, Lord, whenever we are together like this, you bless us and you teach us your word. And now, Lord, even as we give, I pray that, Lord, you would bless us greatly, that we can continue to be a blessing. And Lord, I also pray that as we receive your word, that this word would nourish us, nurture us, and bless us even further. And to be a blessing that would even be in our lives that we can pass on to others. For we pray these things in Jesus' name and God's people say it. Amen. Hey, um... So grateful to welcome you to church today, and I'm excited to be bringing God's Word to you uh, today. Uh, I want to start by asking you a question. I don't know if, you're, if, you, if you watch movies. I suspect many of us do. But what are the signs in a movie that warn you that your favorite character is about to face great danger? Like what happens in the movie? What are the things that movie makers do to tell you, my goodness, things are about to go south for the person that you're really rooting for? Now, I don't know what you said. Uh, I don't know what you thought as I asked this question. For those of you who are real movie buffs, probably the first answer that came to your mind was the music, right? Like something changes. The soundtrack just shifts. All of a sudden, it's been nice, happy music. And all of a sudden, it just becomes suspenseful. And they start playing these minor chords, uh, dark chords. And all of a sudden, even without being told, you can tell, my gosh, my guy is about to face some serious difficulties. You won't even tap on the screen and say, watch out. Things are not what you think. Other cues that movie directors use include things like camera angles. Have you ever noticed how they just show you someone's eyes? And all of a sudden you can see, my gosh, that guy is not telling the truth. Like things are thick. What he's thinking is malicious. And you wish your, your favorite character could actually be able to see 
what you've just seen. Or, or sometimes, I, I know what, there's a movie I watched recently where they showed you, this guy is relaxing and you just, all of a sudden the camera just shows you like through binoculars that someone is watching. That's all they showed. But your heart just melts because you're like, they've been bastard. Someone has found them in their hiding spot. Another favorite technique is lighting. Like all of a sudden, the, the, it's been nice and bright and all of a sudden it just becomes dark. And, and it's all of a sudden you can just tell there's a contrast or, or flickering lights or shadows. And you can tell, my goodness, things are not so good. And then another one that I can think of is visual cues. Uh, this one is, usually, is used a lot by directors. Subtle hints. Where, for example, they show you like a broken mirror and it keeps coming. Or an open door. The door is just swinging and you can tell, oh my gosh. Or they show you storm clouds that are gathering. Or animals behaving unusually. And these are things that are just telling you that things are not what they look like. Like the guys who are watching innocently, moving around in the movie innocently, minding their own business. Things are about to go south for them. Trouble is coming their way. I don't know if about you, but do you sometimes wish that life would give you cues when you're about to face danger? Like, do you sometimes wish there could be a soundtrack? That every time you're about to make a decision, it could change. And it would just go, and you'd know, my gosh, that person is not a good person. That's not a good decision for me to make. You wish that some, something could happen to warn you when you're about to face imminent danger or to make a bad decision. It would be awesome, wouldn't it? I mean, the reality is that recognizing danger signs could save you from making terrible decisions and wasting valuable time in your life. Some of us have wasted valuable time. Some of us have messed up badly because we did not recognize the danger signs. And many of us have lost time in the wilderness of life. We've wasted valuable years because we turned left instead of turning right. We dated this person instead of this one. And no one wants to waste their life because of making bad decisions. In fact, what we really want to know is how do I make the right decisions so I never end up in regret? What do I do to make sure that my decisions are right today? How do I make the right decisions? How do I know whether the girl or girl I'm seeing is the one I should marry? Like, how, how do I know that this career move is the one that will lead me into the happiness I'm, I want to have in my life? How do I know whether this financial path that I'm on is currently the one that will lead, that currently is the one that will lead me to my intended destination of financial freedom? I mean, those are the kind of questions that many times we find ourselves struggling with. And that's the question we want, that's why we want to answer the question today. How do I know what path I should be on today that will give me the tomorrow that I desire? And the topic I want to speak about is the principle, the principle of the right decisions, the principle of getting to where I want to go in life. Now, our visitors, last Sunday, we started a new series called Roadmap. And we're answering this question, how do I get to where I want to be in life? Is there a roadmap that I can follow that will help us reach to our intended destination? So each week of this series, we're going to be looking at some proverbs, wise sayings written by King Solomon. And last week, we encountered the principle of the path, a simple but profound principle. It tells us that every path has a destination, and it's not your intention that determines where you end up in life. It's actually your direction. And, 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 and if you're racking up, for example, debt and living lavishly, that path will not lead you to the destination of financial freedom. If you're a workaholic who values your time at work and sees it as more important than spending time with your family, that path will not lead you to the close-knit family that you desire. And today we want to build on from there. Actually, what I want to speak about is the principle of danger signs because this one is very important, recognizing danger signs. I want to look at a proverb that King Solomon wrote, Proverbs chapter 27. And it's actually a very interesting proverb. You know, the, the book of Proverbs, is, it's, it's like every chapter has many proverbs. Each of those proverbs could be a chapter by themselves. Uh, and, and, and this particular one we want to read could save many people a whole lot of pain and heartache. It's Proverbs 27 verse 12. Proverbs 27, 12. And it says this. It says, The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. The prudent see danger and take refuge but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. My goodness, that is such a powerful scripture. I mean, it's so powerful that it's like a chapter by itself. <laughs> it, just un, uh, mining that proverb could save many people a lot of heartache. Let me say it again, and I, and I want to say it maybe once or twice even so that you get it. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Maybe if it's on the screen, can we say it together? The prudent 
see danger and take refuge. But the simple keep going and pay the penalty. You know, it's such a powerful proverb. And you know, it's actually the main point. In fact, the, the key point that I want to make today. Now, Solomon is introducing us to two characters, two people with very different responses to life. Uh, the same situation they are facing, but two different outcomes to the situation because of how they approach it. The first person is one he calls the prudent. And if you've read the, the book of Proverbs, this word, Solomon often interchanges this word prudent with wise. So a prudent person is a wise person. And the prudent person, the wise person, is the one who understands that life is interconnected, that there is something called cause and effect. The wise person sees a clear relationship between yesterday, tomorrow, uh, today, and tomorrow, and connects the dots well enough to realize that what happened yesterday has a way of affecting what is going on today. And what I do today has a way of affecting what is going to happen tomorrow. The wise person is one who says, because of what happened yesterday and because of what I've learned today, I'm going to make decisions today about what I need to do tomorrow that will help me get to where I'm supposed to be going tomorrow. And, and Solomon says, that's the prudent person. They see danger and they take evasive action. Then he introduces us to a second person, the simple person. Other translations would call this the naive. Uh, or maybe other places would be interchangeable. This word would be interchangeable with a foolish person. The naive person is one who sees life as disconnected. For them, life is only about today. Tomorrow can take care of itself because tomorrow is not in their control. Just because something happened two or three times in the past doesn't mean that they learn from it and keep it from happening again. Somehow this naive person doesn't interconnect the dots and learn. And they sometimes think that I might have intention A, but I can use path B and I'll still somehow magically end up in destination A. That's a naive person. That is somebody who is not prudent. And the naive person can see, for example, that something is wrong with their marriage. They're not connecting with their spouse like they used to or like they desire to. They're not enjoying each other's company like they once did. But you know what a naive person does? They just keep going. They hope that one day things will kind of, kind of just sort themselves out. They get disillusioned and just say, let me just keep doing what I'm doing and hope something changes. They say, you know what? My desire is a happy, fulfilling marriage. But they're somehow not able to connect the dots that the path I'm on will not take me there. And they're not able to stop and recalibrate. They keep going as opposed to sitting down to resolve issues. They won't consider inviting others in to help them resolve issues. They won't consider getting some counseling. They won't consider doing door or another relationship course to help them grow. They keep moving. But a wise person, the prudent person, takes action swiftly to ensure that the path that they land on leads them to the de destination that they desire. Are you seeing the difference between these two people? There's a wise person and a foolish person. There's a prudent person and a naive person. The naive person desperately desires to be financially free. In fact, they can see themselves one day in their 60s and 70s, going on holidays, enjoying life, having significant resources, being a blessing to their grandkids but they've somehow not joined the dots to realize that unless they live differently today, nothing they desire today will happen. It will only be a pipe dream. They don't invest in learning about finances. They, don't, they, they, they spend more than they earn. They are wiping out their savings regularly on unnecessary expenses. And they just have a lifestyle that is almost guaranteeing they will not end up in the desire that they have in their minds. Uh, the wise person takes a very different course of action, the prudent person. The prudent person he sees the dangers of retirement. Uh, they see the danger of brokenness in old age. They see the danger of future illness. And they begin to take action now. They downsize today so that they can live comfortably tomorrow. They diligently learn about finances. They invest in financial education. They take courses to help them. We've talked about some of the courses available at Mavuno, Couples and Money, uh, uh, and, and other courses that are out there that are even offered by members of our church. And they take courses. It costs them something, and they are willing to do it to increase their financial literacy. They readjust their lives in order to get to the desired future that they see. The naive person desires a beautiful marriage, and where they want a marriage where there's going to be trust and love and matters of intimacy. But they're sleeping around with the person they're dating. The wise person says, listen, I want my future wife to completely trust me when I go on a journey. So that even when I go on a long stretch and I'm away for two weeks or three weeks or a month from home, 
they will never be worried about where I am and who I'm with. And so they take action. Right now, they begin to be self they're self-controlled in their relationship, not making out with their girlfriend, not sleeping with them, because they know that if they build that willpower today, their girlfriend will trust them tomorrow. But if I sleep with her today, she will know I had no self-control. And when I travel, where will that self-control suddenly have come from? You see, the naive, that's how they think. They don't think that there's a connection between today and tomorrow. The naive person wants a long, healthy life. But they believe that diabetes and heart disease, those are for old people. <laughs> and, and, and they eat what their heart desires. They eat as much chips and smochas and indomie as they want. And they don't worry about things like weight or exercise or health. You see, the wise person, the prudent person begins to make sacrifices early, knowing that the cost is worth it because of what they will enjoy in the future. See, the difference between a simple person and a wise person is very, it's as different as night and day. The wise person acts like then is now. They begin living now and planning now for tomorrow as if it's already here. For the simple, however, they act like today is the only day. It's like YOLO. <laughs> you live only once. My goodness, that's such a lie. You die once, but you live every day. You need to understand that tomorrow you will still be alive. And you need to be making decisions today that will help you enjoy tomorrow. And so the simple people keep going like there's no tomorrow. Then one day they will become mad at God. And they'll shake their fist at him. And they'll say, why would you allow this to happen to me? After I've gone to church all these years. And God will say, I sent you the danger signs. I showed you the red flags. I asked you to change course. I gave you those proverbs many years ago, 2000. I gave you so many proverbs that you could respond to them and change your life, save your life. But you did not respond. And here's the problem. Many religious people actually have this problem. We listen to messages like the one I'm giving today. And we feel so convicted. We're like, oh boy, this guy must be right. I really ought to spend more time with my kids. I really ought to work out more. I really ought to eat a bit healthier. I really ought to sign up for Ndoa. I really ought to do those financial literacy classes. I really ought to end that relationship. That is a bad relationship. It's not helping me. I, and, and we feel convicted. And, and because it feels good when we are convicted, we feel like, you know what? It's drawn us closer to God. The feeling has drawn us closer to God. You feel like God has spoken directly to you. And, and because God has spoken to you, he must really be close to you and you must be doing the right thing. And we end up confusing conviction and religious feeling with an authentic relationship with God. That's a danger for us Christians. Because we're so good, we feel so good listening to the message, we live feeling convicted. And we're like, boy, I really enjoyed church today. Boy, that message really spoke to me. Boy, I really felt convicted. I love this church. Then we get out of here and nothing changes. It's like you listen to this message and nothing changes. And if you listen to this message next year, you'll be at exactly the same place that you, had, you are today when you heard it. We keep going. But that's what Solomon calls as naive. The naive person. The person who does nothing. They see danger coming and do nothing. He says the prudent, they see danger coming and they do something. The simple just feel convicted and they keep going in the same direction. So if you decide to do something about this message, if you decide to do something about the things that God is convicting you and you want to take refuge in the face of danger, I want to leave you with four words today. Four words that I'd like you to actually write down. Because these words, they're not steps, they're choices along the path that will guide you onto the right path. Uh, four steps that if you take this, if you, four, 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 four words, that if you take these words seriously, you will actually end up in the destination that you desire to end up in. The four words, I'm going to give you an acronym. It's an acronym that we've used many times at Mavuno, but I'm going to use it differently today. Uh, I just use the word, the acronym, because I hope it'll help you remember. And it's the acronym ACTS. We use that acronym in our time of prayer. But I want to change the letters around because of giving you something to remember as you remember this message from. Number one is A. The first letter is A. A is for action. Action. The prudent take action. What action do you need to take today? Do you need to have a hard conversation with someone? Do you need to end a relationship that you're supposed to have, you, you've been in and you've been drifting in and out of? Do you need to get rid of your internet subscription because of your porn addiction? You need to even get rid of your smartphone and get one that is a dumb phone that doesn't lead you into temptation. Do you need to sign up for a course and you've been saying, I'll do it tomorrow? Maybe it's a parenting course, maybe it's a marriage course, maybe it's a financial literacy course, you keep postponing doing it. 
what action must you take today? You know, it takes action to change direction. It's not intention, it's action. Maybe you have to downsize and move your house. I know people in Mavuno Church who've become convicted and they've moved house. They've decided the house we're staying in is finishing all our money. We don't even have enough money left to be able to save, to pay off our debts. And they've downsized completely. So they've released resources so they can be where God wants them to be. Maybe you need to sell something. Maybe you need to quit. Maybe you need to get a new job. Maybe you need to start that business finally. Maybe you need to change your diet. Maybe you need to hit the gym. The the instruction here is going to be different from every single one of us because God is speaking to us in the place of our conviction. I don't know what it is, but what I do know is that when the prudent see danger, they take action. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't think about it. They don't get convicted. They take action. And so the first, the first letter is A, and it stands for action. The next one is C, and it stands for cost. Taking action will cost you. Often, it's going to cost you. And that's what makes it difficult to, to change direction. The very reason why we hang on to the things that we hang on to is because we enjoy being in that situation. Sometimes we think we don't enjoy it, but typically what it is is that the cost of moving from this place is a higher cost, than stay, at least in our minds, than staying in that place. And so we actually are comfortable, even though it's an uncomfortable position to be in. Sometimes the reason we, we are in debt is because we, we, en- we enjoy having stuff. We enjoy being indisciplined and not being, able, not being disciplined with our money. The reason we're in bad relationships is because we enjoy the thrill of danger and, and the feeling of companionship they bring us in our brokenness. Sometimes the reason we compromise our health is because we just love fast food and sugar and we don't want to be disciplined. I mean, we enjoy the feeling of just eat what I want when I want. You know that the idea of sacrifice is quite uncomfortable, to be honest, the idea of paying a cost. But if you should choose to apply this principle, you're going to have to sacrifice something. You're going to have to pay the cost. You may need to sacrifice your lifestyle, sacrifice your money, sacrifice a promotion, sacrifice a a, a friendship or a romance, sacrifice your sleep. (laughs) When, When you see danger and choose to act, you always have to count the cost because there's a cost. Remember the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and they pay the penalty. And then the third word is T for tension. Tension. When you take action, not only do you, will it cost you, but also leads to tension. What, why is that? Because people around you will often not understand. You may have to make decisions that you cannot fully explain to others. And you may hear things like, and why exactly did you leave that relationship? Was it because of a sermon by a pastor who doesn't even know the two of you and who, who preached a message? Like, get real. Why would you do that? Or you might hear people saying you're living a beautiful home and you're downsizing to a two-bedroom house. Uh, Like, are you crazy? Why would you do that? Or you might hear people say you're you're saying no to a promotion because you want to spend more time with your kids. Are you mad? Like, are you sure you're okay? Like, people may not understand the hard decisions you make because you want to stick to the destination. You want to get to the destination you choose to go. But the wise make decisions that are in their best interest and in the interest of the direction God has led them into. And those decisions are often very difficult to explain to others. Think about Abraham leaving his land and going to a place because God told him to go. It's like you try and explain to people, why are you going? God told me. Like, where, is it? where are you going? I don't know. I'm just following. It just sounds crazy. And people around you oftentimes will only see what is today. They don't see, they judge you based on what they're seeing today. But you see, the wise make their decisions based on what they anticipate tomorrow. And tension is something you must learn to live with. I've made decisions in my life many times that have put me at odds with people because they don't understand where I'm living the way I'm living. And sometimes people even feel judged by the decisions you're making. Are you making this decision because you're saying something about us? It has nothing to do with you. It's my conviction because of where I'm going. Remember, the prudent see danger and take refuge. The simple keep going and they pay the penalty. And then the last uh, letter is S because remember it's ACTS. And that word is success. It's the best word here. I love this word because the day is coming when you will see success. It's coming. You know, you may look back to this day as the day you got off the path that was leading you to destruction in a major area of your life. A year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you may look back and realize that this is the day your life (laughs) destiny was shaped when you made the right decisions for your future. Uh, you, you, might say, you, you might even look back and say, what if I hadn't acted? What if I hadn't started eating right? 
What if you hadn't made that tough financial decision? What if I hadn't registered for that class? One day you're going to look back and say, my God, I'm so grateful that I made that action, that I paid the cost, that I was willing to live with attention because now I'm enjoying my success. You know, I, I look back at my life at some of the hard decisions we've had to make and some of the criticism we faced as we made those decisions. And you know what? There are many things right now that I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I made the hard decisions. It was worth every minute. In the time that you're making it, it didn't feel like it. But when you are through with it and you look back, you're like, I'm so grateful that I made that decision. Now listen, whatever you do, don't forget this proverb. Chapter 27, verse 12. It says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. As we close today with prayer, you know, I pray that the Lord will give you the wisdom to see danger coming. That you'll be one of those wise people who doesn't walk around foolishly, naively, just keeping on despite the danger signs. Sometimes people feel like because everybody else is making the foolish decision, we are okay. We are many of us. Have you ever seen people crossing a highway in Kenya? And sometimes what happens is because cars are coming dangerously, they, they wait until there's a crowd of about 50 or 20 of them. And then it's like, let's all cross together. Because if we are many of us, they won't hit us. That is the foolishest thing you can ever think. Because sometimes I think, you're so many of you, somebody will have to die when that lorry comes, when that lorry loses its brakes, you know? Uh, being many will not save you. In fact, it's probably going to make sure that somebody dies in that mess. And, and, and sometimes looking around at others and the decisions they're making, that is the worst way to make a decision. I pray that the Lord will give you the prudence, the wisdom to see trouble coming long before it gets here. That you make the right decisions for your family, you make the right decision for your finances, you make the right decisions for your faith now as a young person and that God will bless you for that. I pray that you make the right decision as a parent. You know, sometimes I look at parents today and the priorities they have for their children. Our priority is to get our kids in the best schools and to make sure they have the best education. And we're not re realizing we could be shaping rich kids uh, who are rich fools, that who have no values and no, no thoughts about uh, how to live. And we're creating these rich, arrogant children and not understanding that, you know what, our time with them when they are young to shape their values are much more important than even the schools that they go to. I pray that God will give us the wisdom to make the right decisions. And as you do that, my prayer is that you will find that whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your faith, that God will supply you not only with the wisdom, but He will also show you, uh, give you the courage to make the right decisions. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. And I thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us about danger signs. Last week, we learned about the principle of the path. Today, you've taught us about the principle of danger signs, that the wise are the people who see danger coming and they take evasive action. While the foolish are the ones who keep going and they suffer, they pay the penalty for it. I pray that, Lord Jesus, your people will be wise people. Lord, I pray that even as we meet this week, as we discuss this conversation in our churches, in our discipleship groups, I pray that, Lord, you would give us the wisdom to be able to call out the danger signs we're seeing. I pray that you'd give us the wisdom to even be able to discuss and say in the different areas of our lives, where are there danger signs right now? And how do we begin to act evasively to keep from landing in those places? I pray that you'd give us the ability to take courageous action because there are some of us right now, you're calling us to take courageous action. And listen, there's somebody here where God is saying, today is the day of your salvation. You've been waiting for a long time to make a decision. Today is the day you make that decision. Today is the day you leave that relationship that is not a marriage. It's something you've entered into, a situationship that is destroying your spirit, destroying your ability to enjoy the relationships you're created for. Today is the day you stop watching those movies and you actually cut off that internet subscription. Today, not another day, you're not postponing taking the hard action. You're willing to pay the cost and live with attention so that one day you will enjoy the success. Father, I pray that there are many here who will take that courageous decision and that there will be a change in their lives. And Father, right now, I also want to pray for somebody who, who will make a courageous decision. Maybe you've been saying, you know what, I know one day I'm going to get saved. It's just not today. There's still things I need to do. Listen, there's nothing you can ever do in your life to get yourself more ready to, to, to be saved. You cannot correct your life enough and get your life in order for God to work with you. Uh, God, God loves you so much. He's going to accept you just as you are. And He's the one who will give you the help to change. You cannot change your life. And so if you're here 
and you're saying, Pastor M, I'd like to give my life to Jesus today. I'd love for you to just uh, pray with me a prayer. If you're here, pray with me this prayer uh, and say these words. Dear Jesus, I come to you today to give you my life. Forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to be a child of God. From today, I am fully yours. With your help, I will walk in your direction and I will enjoy the success that you created me for. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations on making the best decision of your life. Hey, listen, if you pray that prayer, we would love to walk with you. We would love to send you some literature to help you take the, uh, take the next step and the next step. would love to just uh, walk with you in that. So please uh, use the information on the screen. Send us a message. Let us know who you are and we'll be sure to send you some information and support you as you take these steps. Avoiding danger steps, walking in the right direction to the success that you are created for. God's people, have a wonderful, wonderful week. I can't wait to see you next week.